Okay, so I, I have a new handout that further helps to define what we need to do for successful SEO. Uh, you want to go into the uh, computer window on the top left. So we'll click computer. Then inside of computer, inside of classroom data in the section of network location, go ahead and open classroom data. Drive Z, Z as in zebra. And then we'll scroll down to find our class, which is Campus SEO. Open that folder. And then you'll drag a copy. So take a copy of this file from the network folder to your flash drive, or at least to the desktop. Copy over this backlinks file to your desktop. Item number three, SEO number three, backlinks. So go ahead and copy that over. And we'll take a look at it. As I said, the printer's off at the moment. Uh, so during the next break, you can print. But copy item number three, SEO three backlinks to your desktop. So this document is about backlinks. Nowadays, the search engines care about quality content more than ever. The ranking of your website is elevated when quality sites link to it. Backlinks, then, are very important to create authority and quality on your website, which in turn raises your page rank. So we've said it previously, and it's important to say it again. Remember the three pillars of SEO, which are longevity, authority, content. The longer your content exists, the more it helps you. So how long does your content exist for? Authority. Why is, why is your content valuable for searchers, people that are searching, or users and content. What are you creating on a regular basis? So these are variations of what we talked about before, that uh, I've got a website, I need people to find it, well if people start typing a Google search and I just set up my website, it's too new perhaps, it doesn't have a lot of longevity, one of, one of the many factors, so it might not get found. Well, you don't have to have content that exists for a long time because there's no way to go back in time and set yourself up before a certain time on the web. So then we have authority and the actual content itself. Um, in the blogging class, we talk about creating a series of content, creating uh, articles related to topics. Uh, that's your content. The more of that content that you create, the more it will help your authority, so when people search, you could appear more. And the longer you do that, the better. So we've talked about that before. And now here's another factor that we need to think about here. Backlinks. Also known as inbound links. Or incoming links. Basically, links to your site. So backlinks are an important factor for, for modern SEO. These are links from other websites to your website. So links from another website to your website. Back to your website. Backlinks. Links from some other website back to your website. Now, as the document here will explain, there are positive links to your site and negative links to your site that we have to talk about and deal with. The big idea why backlinks are important is think about it in terms of if you were in an English class, let's say, or maybe a, a science class or something, and you had to write a 10-page paper, especially in a science class. You have to write a 10-page paper, and uh, you're going to turn in your 10 pages. What's the very, very last page usually of any big, important term paper? 
bibliography, the works cited. What did you use? What did you use as a foundation to write your ten pages? Uh, most of the time, if you turn in some ten-page paper and you have no work cited, it's an automatic F because they assume you plagiarized. They assume that you're not genius enough that you invented all of this knowledge of ten pages. Maybe you were, but probably you still got some knowledge from other sources. You cited other works, bibliography. So, how that relates with SEO, if your content, if your website is good enough, if the content on it is valuable enough, people will link to it, people will vouch for you, people will raise your authority by linking to your content. And that's why backlinks are very important. Getting backlinks is very important for modern SEO. And I keep saying modern SEO and all of that because as we've talked about before, this stuff changes. Uh, techniques that used to work would work, but then get abused by the spammers, and then now new techniques are developed, and then you have to follow the new techniques. So modern SEO, backlinks, getting links to your site from um, relevant websites that you do not control. That you do not control, because in the old days, backlinks still had a value. But what spammers figured out was, I'm going to buy a website name, victorsbakery.com, and I'm also going to buy victorswebdesign.com, and I'm going to buy victorsdogwalking.com, and victorsconstruction.com, and I'm going to link all of those together. And the search engines would see, this website has a lot of links going to it, but why is a dog walking company, a design company, and, a, and whatever other company I said, all linking to that bakery? What, what does that have to do? What do those three links have to do with the first link? Nothing. But that's what the spammers would do. They would link all of these sites together simply to raise the number of backlinks. And nowadays, it's relevant websites. So websites about related content of your website. Not exact content, of course, but related content. If I've got a bakery, I want food-related websites to link to my site. Maybe travel, maybe baking, cooking, food review sites, restaurant sites. I want food-related sites pointing, linking to my website about baking. I also, the search engines also don't want those to be sites that you control, that you created and linked to yourself, or that you paid or asked for another company to link to you. Because in the old days, it was also en vogue to do, what did they used to be called, link, um, Link rings, something like that. What were they called? Link rings, link circles. I think it was also link circles, where we would uh, webmasters would contact each other and said, "Okay, I'll link to your site if you link to my site." And they would build a ring of links. And in the old days, that was valuable. That was encouraged. That worked. But then that got abused. So now, link rings are a no-no. You don't want to simply make some sort of uh, plan. You don't want to collude with other websites to link to each other simply to, to try to raise your ranking. Again, why is that bakery company linked with this pet food company? Why is this uh, architecture company linked with that uh, you know, pet sitting company? Those concepts don't relate. Why would they be linking to each other? But if I had you know, a pet shop, uh, linking to it would be, yes, an animal shelter website or uh, blogging websites about raising a pet, that sort of thing. Related content connected to each other. On the flip side, irrelevant, irrelevant, irrelevant links can harm your SEO or your ranking. So we said previously about that the search engines have to be very strict, that if you engage in spam behaviors, you might get marked as a spammer, and therefore it's going to be hard to prove your innocence. So here then, if you've been engaging in these link rings, link building rings, these link schemes, if you've been paying for people to link to your site, if you've gone out and, and bought software, you can buy software that'll link a thousand websites to you. 
If you're engaging in those sorts of tactics, that'll be irrelevant, harmful links to your site. The document here will address all of those points. But this is the big idea. Backlinks, links to your site. Does, does this make sense? Any questions? So in the handout, I have a recommendation. I've mentioned it before. A couple of textbooks that I recommend. A couple of textbooks that I like regarding SEO. And this first one here is more about if you're starting things off from the ground floor. You're about to build a website. Here's some things to read and look at and think about implementing. The checklist is about a step-by-step -step guide. Oftentimes, if you've, if you've already got a website that doesn't rank well anymore, how, what can I do, what can I check to improve what is there now? Both are valuable and they're not that expensive. I didn't, haven't checked their prices recently, but they're, I think, like under $10 each. Uh, so very affordable. And we will open up our webmaster tools a little bit later and we'll look at these screens here because the webmaster tools that we set up last time will point to will 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 collect the the links the backlinks it'll give you a report about how many links are pointing to your site so we'll see it in search con google search console google analytics and bing webmaster tools we'll look at all of those a little bit later but that's how you get to them the point of this when we do it together is you should have some sort of plan to work with your backlinks report. So I have here, download your links and compile them in a spreadsheet, review them periodically, add notes and highlight colors. So a little more concretely here, I'm going to say backlinks goal. Once per month, <coughs> log into each of the three webmaster tools. Google Search Console, Google Analytics, Bing Webmaster Tools. Log in once a month, download the report, and compile into a master spreadsheet. So Microsoft Excel or Numbers on the Mac, whatever spreadsheet software. You can download all of this data, this report, as a spreadsheet file. So you know it'll be rows and columns of data. I'm going to download it, and uh, every new every new month, download the data, compile it all into one document. It's going to be in a document on your computer because then uh, annotate the document, mark in colors good links and bad links. We'll explain what good and bad is in a little bit. Annotate you know, notes on the um, websites. And this is the goal to, or in order to, either for good links promote And for bad links, demote. We'll see how in a bit. But this is a goal to do once a month. If you've never done this before, the first time will be a bit of a hassle because you might have a big report to deal with. And then as time goes on, month by month, it'll be more manageable. You'll, you'll understand the process. And the whole point of this is to check the good and the bad. We'll talk about what's good and what to do with it, and what's bad and what to do with it. Because if you just leave your website to kind of exist on its own, and you're not controlling it, you're not being a good webmaster about it, the search engine will say, well, if this webmaster doesn't care about their site to optimize it, why would we rank it better than others that do care? So taking the time to be a good webmaster can pay off. I get people coming all the time that Toward the end of the course, they tell me they've started to do these processes that we talk about, and they say, I'm already starting to see some results. It's not that people are going to get number one in three weeks, but being in number 20 and then going up to number 12, uh, it's definitely great results.
So I've got a section then on page two about good links and bad links. Taking advantage of your good of your good backlinks, I should have written. Now that you have a backlink report, you can create more authority for your site. The tactic is to link quality content to the links that link to your own website link. This sounds like circular logic. The example is tweet about a positive restaurant review. On Facebook, post a link to a blog post that positively reviewed your product. In the book, it's outlined in a section called Backlinks to Backlinks. The more good content that is pointed to sites that you link to, the more your SEO rank could increase. It's a lot of work, but could pay off. So what I'm trying to say is, we're going to log into our Webmaster Tools in a bit, and we're going to see the report, and we're going to see there is a website that's linking to my website that is positive. It writes about my website in a positive way, or it links to my website in a positive way. So there exists at least one website that is good. What I want to do is promote that website. I don't mean literally with money if you don't want to. I mean go on your Facebook, on your Twitter, your company Facebook, your company Twitter, your company Pinterest, whatever, and share the link that is positive to you. You are getting a little bit more traffic for that link that is positive to you because then you're sharing that positive link to your followers. You're making them aware of that positive link. And some of your followers then may see that link that have never seen it before driving traffic to that link which drives traffic back to yours. And better yet, what about those followers that see that link and share it? They want to share that link to their friends and family and say, look at this great article about this restaurant. So their friends and family could see that and that could bring more traffic back to you. It's like it's like a loop. So example, share a positive link about your company on your social media. A simple tweet about it, a simple post on Facebook, Instagram, whatever, any of the social media, that's your promotion tool. You can use social media for free or paid. For free works really well, paid works a little better, just like in the real world. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to share one of those links. This spreads that original positive message to more people. This could have then more people see the positive message, the positive press about you. The positive message could spread further. That's what social media does. It, things go viral, things get popular, things go out further than the original reach. I have 50 followers on Twitter. Let's say I have 20 followers on Twitter. And I share something. One of those followers, they themselves might have 100 followers. So what I shared originally to those 20, this one that has 100, they might have reshared it and I've reached 120. And out of those 100, uh, perhaps someone else has a thousand followers. And that one person with a thousand followers amplified the signal even more. So I could have reached 1,210. Starting off with my little group of 10 to a further group of 100 connections to a further group of 1,000. This brings traffic to the positive message and then ultimately back to you. It's like piggybacking on popularity. If someone uh, linked to your website in a positive way, we want to promote that. We want that to be uh, a catalyst for more activity. show an example of that in a bit. That's the positive. That's what you do with a positive link. That's what you do with good publicity, good press. You further promote it because it in turn promotes you. On the opposite, 
the opposite side, it could be that, um, not that people are writing negative articles about your site, but it could be that spam sites are linking to your site. It's very common to have a variety of these uh, spam websites out there just linking blindly to a variety of unrelated sites that's uh, trying to get, uh, those are trying to get links back. And so with bad, with bad links, it's guilt by association. If you have bad links to your site, <coughs> you could be listed as a bad site by the search engines. Guilt by association. There's so many spam sites out there that it's easier for the search engines to mark them as spam and have them be ignored rather than trying to give you the benefit of the doubt. So. I don't want to be caught up with the bad link. So after I check my reports monthly and I'm compiling my spreadsheet and I'm seeing um, these websites that are not related to my site, I need to deal with them. I'll make a note here to get back to it a little bit later. What's a bad backlink? I'll get back to that one. But let's say we've identified them and the main idea to prevent any negativity as soon as possible. Bad links are identified. Disavow links. This is a process that we tell the search engines these links are not good links. These links are spam. These links are fake. These links don't relate to my site. Google, Bing, please disavow them. Don't take them into account. Don't let them hurt me, my ranking. It's not that you're going to stop the link or unlink the site. There's no way to do that. The website itself has to stop the link back to your website. Google, tell the search engines that don't take them into account. Don't take those bad links into account when ranking my site. Do so in Bing and Google. You don't want to be dragged down by those other bad links, so you have to spend the time. Again, being a good webmaster. It's not just having a website. Anyone can have a website, but not everyone has a good website. So then it's up to you to be a good webmaster. It's up to you to log into these webmaster tools and tell the search engines these links are not good. And you do this and other people do this and then the search engines are compiling then a list of bad websites. So that in the long term, less bad websites affect you. If bad backlinks could be so detrimental, people often ask me, well, what's a bad backlink? Uh, this is not as easy to explain without examples. I'll show examples in a moment. Uh, but I'm going to say irrelevant links. So again, is, if your company is in one sort of sector or one sort of market, why is this website unrelated linking to you? Websites with questionable domain names. A website that's linking to you that's called makemoneyfast.com or freebuttonsforyoursite.net or getrankednumberone.org. You know, all of these sorts of names that nowadays are reek of spam sites. Uh, someone had claimed that name of that keyword that now uh, it's been abused. So questionable domain names. Um, depending on your target market and such, one, not that it's always this, but you have to be suspicious of this. 
because of the data, unfortunately. Uh, international websites. Why am I getting so, man, so many links from these Russian websites? Why am I getting so many links from these websites from Brazil? Why am I getting so many links you know, from outside the country? If I've got a business on Main Street, why am I getting these links from Greece? So, websites from all over the world linking to you, unless you have some sort of international reach, you're probably going to be suspicious of those international sites. So we'll see more concrete examples in a little bit, but these that I will show you are exactly like this. They're not related to the main topic of the site. They are from these questionable domains, and they're often uh, international sites that don't relate to a local business. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at our backlinks report. We're going to talk in detail about what these webmaster tools are that we set up last time. Then we're going to talk about content creation, because if it's all about getting backlinks and good content, that's one of the big things. Content, meaning ideas, what should I be posting on my website, we'll have that talk as well. Any questions on any of these concepts so far? Last time that we were here, raise your hand. How many of you managed to set up any of the webmaster tools I talked about? Okay, good amount of people. What we're going to do then is, um, if you did manage to set it up, what we'd like to do right now is go ahead and open your web browser. And first, we're going to log into the Bing Webmaster Tools, and we're going to see uh, our account, and then the backlinks report. So remember, the link is. It's in the handout number two, but memorize bing.com slash toolbox. Take a moment to sign in. Remember last time we either created an account or we signed in and then we verified our site. This time, go ahead and sign in since you already should have a website uh, verified. So click that sign in button. If um, you didn't set this up previously, uh, you could take a moment to do it or not. It's a bit of a lengthy process. So go ahead and, and uh, sign in. For some reason, um, this happens sometimes because we're in a room full of people trying to do the same thing on the same website. So Microsoft sees why are 20 computers trying to do the same thing at once. So we'll be able to do this most likely then at home if you weren't able to sign in. Um, actually, can I see anyone's screen that looks like that message right now? Who has that message? Anyone have that message? After you sign in, 
After you sign in, let me explain what we've got. This is going to be similar to all both of the webmaster tools, Google and, and Bing. Uh, and in this particular account that I'll show you some data of, this screen shows various clients because as I said I teach this and, I, and we do this for a living also uh, in my company. So here are all of these companies with all of this data and I'm going to explain what the, what the data means. This main screen here is going to list your website. If you've only got one website, well, you've got one. But here that I manage several, all other websites are here. If there are any important things that need to be fixed about the site as soon as possible, you'll be list, it'll be listed here under the messages column. If you've got a lot of broken links, I suppose, or may, maybe other structural problems, it'll give you a message. Then we have clicks from search and appeared in search. Whenever you do a search on Bing and your site appears, that was appeared in search. Someone typed, you know, uh, wedding cakes in Victor's Bakery appeared on page one. That was appeared in search. And based on this current time period, which is the last 30 days, this site has appeared 10% more times. The exact value of how many times is in a subsequent screen. But in general, that particular website has appeared 10% more times than last month. That's a valuable metric, which is, a, uh, which is an impression. Remember we had impressions and conversions. We talked about that earlier. Impressions, conversions. Someone saw your content. Conversions. Someone clicked your content. Someone took an action. A conversion is an action. An impression is simply, I saw something, like I see that billboard every day when I drive down the road, that's an impression. But I do need a plumber now, so I'll call the number, that's a conversion. It's a result. So what this is telling us here, not in those words, but that's what that is, impressions and conversions. Impressions, conversions. Clicks from search in this time period, zero. The site appeared, but no one clicked on it apparently compared to this month and last month. And the reason we set up the webmaster tools last time also is because you want to set these up as soon as possible so it collects your data. So that then you can say, okay, show me the data in a three-month time period. Because we have red numbers, we have green numbers, we have blue numbers. And in a short amount of time, let's say if I just set it for seven days, Wow, look at that. Clicks from search 300%. This site is doing amazingly. Yes, in seven days. And then if you look at it in 30 days, well, not so good. And then if you look at it in a little bit longer, this particular kind, that's not so good either. So the longer you have it set up, the better. In three months, there have been less clicks, more, more impressions, or less conversions for various reasons. So just because you see a red number doesn't mean it's totally bad unless you're looking at it in longer time periods. If you haven't set this up 60 days ago, then it's not going to show you data of 60 days ago. If you set this up 7 days ago, it's only got 7 days of data to show you. Pages crawl, pages indexed. Uh, the search engine uh, has to scan your your site. It goes to the home page, then it goes to any sub pages. It follows every link that it finds on the page. So those are pages crawled. Their, their software is browsing every link on your site. It's crawling around. And then if it finds pages that are not already saved into the search engine, it indexes them. So there hasn't been really anything new, new content added to that website, so then the search engine didn't save it. Again, longer periods of time give you a better result. If you follow the stock market from day to day, it may seem like, wow, this stock market is weird and scary and people losing money and this and that. But if you look at it in a month, in three months, in 12 months, in five years, in 20 years, the stock market is a very, very good investment vehicle.
and the same thing here. If I look at it in seven days, that's too much, too little bit of a time to make a good decision of action. But if you look at it in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, whatever, that gives you better results. So just kind of going in general to some of these other ones. You see more views or less clicks. Sometimes there's the weird number infinity. I think that's just because it div this has to divide these numbers and the numbers are so close you get a weird result of infinity. Um, so looking at things in, in the longer term is much more helpful. But you wouldn't live and die simply by that, by that number right there. There's more data to look at. So on your site, go ahead and actually click on the click on on the site. Uh, I changed mine to I think th thirty or sixty days. I I changed it to more time, three months, just to show you more data in the longer term. I clicked on an individual site. This takes me to the dashboard where I have many more screens to look at over here. This will give me the actual numbers. Okay, so in this amount of time there have been less clicks. 9%, that sounds terrible. Well, the prior period was 591 clicks and the current period is 537. Yes, 9%, but not really a lot of loss in traffic. Appeared in search. The previous month the site appeared 17,000 times, this time 19,000 times. More impressions, less conversions, but not so much. If that had gone from 500 views last month to 200 views, that's terrible. But that little bit of difference, and that could be for a variety of reasons. Uh, you know, their, uh, their content and social media and such, marketing. Pages crawled, more pages were found, more content was found. This one also has crawl errors. That's broken links or anything like that. That's been on the decrease. We can further go into more detailed data. Sitemaps. We mentioned sitemaps last time. Uh, there's a little category here that it recognized the sitemap. It found these links. When did it crawl it? It's successful. The search engine then has browsed the site and found the content. Because if the search engine doesn't know your content exists, well, how will regular people? People use the search engine to find things. There will be a screen that we can look at where there's keywords. When we've talked about keywords before, we were doing it the, the way about compiling the keywords ourselves, figuring out the keywords. The search engine, once you've got it set up, will start to help you and tell you about, about keywords. This keyword here, wheat lacoche, I had mentioned previously that that's, a, that's an interesting uh, dish that they sell at this restaurant. There have been 52 clicks from that search term. How many times it appeared in search? And the next to each one's a little dollar symbol, and that tells you if you want to purchase that keyword to be visible more by more people, here's how much it costs. Main line which is in the main center column of results, or sidebar, which of course is on the side over there. Sometimes it's much more expensive to have a keyword in the main line, because it's the main place people will see. But here it's saying about five cents per click. Uh, so again, in the class, we don't go into a detail here about pay per click or paid uh, search campaigns and such, but that's the idea that if you have for example, a pool of $100 in your Bing account, you will be charged $0.05 cents every time someone clicks your link. If you pay for the search engine to show your site more based on that keyword, $0.05. Cents. Some of them could be $0.25, cents, some of them could be a dollar or more. So every time someone clicks that link, you get deducted a dollar. That means you get 100 clicks out of that $100. Inbound links. We'll look at that in detail, but this particular client then says it's 920 links connecting to the home page, 42 connecting to that page, and 16 there. Then some quick diagnostic tools where you can have the search engine 
analyze page by page uh, if my site has been optimized. For the moment, what I want to look at, according to my handout, if we back up to finding your backlinks in Bing, you have to be in the dashboard like I am right now. Under, under the reports and data, you will have inbound links. So you see on the left side, reports and data. <coughs> Click on that, that opens up, and then you'll have inbound links. In this time period, it shows that there's been an increase of links to this site. Sometimes people see an inbound link graph, but then they don't see actual results down here. That happens when, the, when spam links have been identified. When the search engine sees, you've got links to your site, but we're not going to show them because they're not relevant. They're spam. So this chart here doesn't have that much meaning. You want to see the actual report here. So on the left side, it shows what page is the one getting the traffic. And then on the right side, how many links are going to it. So the home page has most of the traffic. Second, this blog post about the amazing McGay plant, which is what they use to flavor the food and also use for one of the alcoholic beverages that they sell the blog post about Weed La Coche, the about page, the article about Andrew Zimmer, the contact page. I was saying previously that those are some important pages to have on a site, some sort of about page, contact page. If you click at the top, I forget the exact difference between export and export all, but I'll just click export and see what happens. What it'll do is it'll uh, download a spreadsheet file. Which then you can open in Excel. So the export is pretty dumb. It just shows you this. These are the pages that got the links. That's not worth it at all. What you want is export all, because then that gives you what I was going to show next. Every actual website that linked to your site. So here's like laweekly.com, 10 great flans in Los Angeles. This client has a restaurant in San Diego and a restaurant in Los Angeles. They sell flan. And so LA Weekly wrote an article, the 10 best flans in LA. The restaurant that our client did not ask for that article, did not pay for that article. They got that article because of their food. Then a blogger at LA Weekly uh, wrote, a, wrote a piece. It's, one of the, it's in one of the 10. And that is an active link coming from a real website. Question. Mm -hmm. um, so for social media um, sites, they can't really backlink because I noticed there's no like social media sites on there. Exactly. Um, it's got to be like a, at least a blog or a, like, some kind of site. blog, some kind of website, some sort of stationary thing. Because yes, yeah, social media is, you know, they call it the fire hose. Mm -hmm. There's always yeah. stuff coming out of it all the time. So notice right here, you don't you don't see that. So think about uh, that social media is a springboard, but then the most value comes from an established website. Mm -hmm. Now what we could do is, uh, because it's less links, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to click on the second result. I'll come back to the first one in a moment. But the second result, then if I click there, it goes deeper, which is what it, which is what I get out of this report, out of you know going all the way down to 1,028 lines. 
here you can look at it one by one and if you're looking at it each individual page by one then you can do export and that will then show you results of that particular page so now here it's only showing me uh, in this sort of way it's still then all of these results and the point of downloading the results is that then I can work on that document uh, so all of these uh, links are coming from survivingmexico.com. Did you explain anchor? What it means, anchor text? No, not text? yet. Okay. So these links are these are backlinks. These are coming from you know, agosearch.com, dnainfo.com, etc. These are coming from that website. And what the anchor text is on that website that's what is the active link. That's what people can click on to come back to this website. If I were if I were to go look at it, you can click and it'll take you to the original link. So DNA info, seven new beer gardens, markets and restaurants to try in Memorial Day weekend. So this is from DNA info. Again, it's uh, some sort of food blogging site. It's uh, our news or something, neighborhood news. And then they've got an article about food here, Chelsea and Hell's Kitchen. And it goes on, and somewhere here there's a link. My gay, right there. They're talking about this particular restaurant, Cantina Rooftop. But then they mention my gay brace lamb shank. Well, and if someone wanted to see um, what's my gay, they click on that and it goes back to our client our client has in their eyes the best definition of what that is. We're excited. This article here is citing another article, the one from our client, the one that we wrote. So this report, it's going to be in the spreadsheet here somewhere. I would find it in the spreadsheet. Right there. And because I've downloaded the file, I can work in it in Excel. Back on the website, you just really view it and click it, but you can't really work with it because this is what I'm going to be doing once a month. This is what you should be doing once a month. You, you download your report, you look into it, you can organize it, alphabetize it, all of that, and then, for example, go here and mark that as yellow or, or another color like um, is a good result. And I'm going to go in here and see something else. Well, that's not a good one. So then I'm going to mark it as red. And I'm just going in and marking all of these good and bad and so forth. So that then I could do the second part of this. The first part is analysis. The second part is action. I'm going to browse a few more here. Like these about Ego Search, Magay Commerce, Antibiotic Stew, Magay Philippines. Um, you know, those could be good links or not. This is the part that's, that's difficult sometimes. I need to check if that link is, uh, is good or not, so I can click on it and it'll take me to the original link. But unfortunately, these, some of these spam sites are getting really advanced in that, uh, you know, they have all these pop-ups that appear that kind of like lock you into the website. Um, it's difficult to kind of do this as a beginner sometimes because if you don't know what what is this site I would want to click on it and in this case well it looks like a, some some kind of search engine some some kind of search engine that's here which just from seeing it I don't I don't think it's a good one I think it's I'm starting to see a trend of, uh, about these like mini search engines that are popping up. They're just trying to collect links and data to, to reach out to more sites. So I feel that that one wouldn't be a good one. So all of these that have a link over to agosearch.com, I feel that they're not valuable. So I would start to go in and mark all of these as not good.
there's another one. Ten crazy San Diego dishes that celebrate the whole darn animal. So it goes on here to say all of these things, and then the client is right there, takes Coco. Um, so it's a it's another positive link. I have to go. I have to go through my results and see what's positive, what's negative. If something is positive, I would go over to the Twitter account or the YouTube or Facebook or whatever, the social media. Let's say it was my company. I would go over to the social media of my company and then I would go in and promote this article. I would promote that I'm getting promoted. I would uh, let more people know that I'm being written in a positive way and I would then try to build more traffic, more hype for the original link. So here's a real-world example from that client. City of Chula Vista recently tweeted about the, uh, the Harbor Fest. So that's a positive thing. That's a good thing. We then shared that link, retweeted it. We helped promote that promotion. That's gotten some conversions, some likes, and some further retweets that's spreading out to reach more people over here as well jet setters flying Set, mentioning San Diego mentioning the restaurant so we want to promote that free promotion this Twitter account is not that all the time of course it's a mixture if you take the social media class we talk about the balance of self-promotion and community building content um, here's another one where we're saying, okay, LA Magazine uh, named the restaurant one of the best of LA. That's getting more traffic, more promotion. We're sending traffic over to uh, that positive link, which sends traffic back to the original link. So the point of knowing what these good links are is to be able to do that, to be able to engage in further marketing in social media, to build upon promotion that exists. Twenty-one more tacos to try before you die in LA. Quick browse, I'm not seeing a lot of the spam ones because we do this. We go in and we go in and, and disavow, which I'll get to that one in a moment. We go in and disavow the, uh, the negative links so that they stop showing up here and, and weighing down the site, the client. 15 best places for sodas in Chula Vista. So it's mentioning all of these, Project Pie, etc., PJs, Costco. Chains, chocolate juice, and the client. So all of this, so it's got higher than Starbucks. So all of this content out there, higher than chocolate juice. Uh, this is this is the content that is uh, SEM. What are you doing besides your website? This is Foursquare. This is a website that is like Yelp, but with more of like a game and. Uh, community aspect to it. And people here are writing good things about that client. Very good things. That's the only one that's cracking a nine out of the results it looks. So it's more publicity, free publicity for the client. Positive links giving positive traffic to the client. Well, if all of that is the good links, 
that you identify what's a good link and what you do with it is you promote it. Now you have to deal with the opposite, which is, oops, I, hear, I see here in my report I've got a dozen of these spam websites. Freewebsitebuttons.com or makemerankwell.net you know, these sorts of bad sites. We have to then engage in disavow. Over for Bing, it's pretty easy to do. Over for Google, it's pretty hard to do. I'll explain why in a moment. For Bing, it would be under the dashboard, configure my sites, disavow links. So if I go back to Bing, go back to the dashboard, configure my site, disavow links. at the top. Which inbound links would you like to disavow? You have three options. Most of the time you're going to be dealing with the third option. The differences are, let's say there's a website. And there's a particular page. Spam page.html. That's what that is. It's saying this particular page is a spam site. It's a spam page. It's, it's full of detrimental content, I want to tell Bing to disavow this page. The next option, a directory, is something more like this, that there is some, some structure, some organization, it's in the blog, it's, it's in some section, of some folder of content. I'm going to say everything inside of this particular directory or folder spam content. Don't let it affect my site. And the reason I'm saying you're going to mostly deal with the third option is because it's it's very rare nowadays that one page of this site is a spam site or one section of the site is a spam site. The whole thing is a spam site. That's what it was designed to do. It was designed to uh, send out viruses or trick people to buy shoddy merchandise or some nefarious purpose. The whole site was designed to be bad. So most of the time, you're going to be disavowing the whole domain, the whole site. You would then disavow it. It would then take some time and process it. I don't know how much. It depends on various factors, probably trade secrets. And then eventually, that site there will no longer affect your ranking. You have to be careful, of course, because from this disavow, what if you accidentally disavow a good link? That could shoot you in the foot. That could cause your traffic, your rankings to, to decrease because you've said that site, uh, I'm disavowing it, but whoops, actually it was a good site that you should not have. That's why with Google, when we see that later, it's much more difficult. There's no direct link in Google Webmaster Tools to click disavow. One way to get to it is to search. Google Disavow Tool. If you go to Google and do a Google search for Google Disavow Tool, you'll get the Google Disavow Tool. Or you can follow my direct link there. We'll see how this works later, because then you also have to sort of, you have to uh, like uh, write a little document, a, a simple, how I've been writing in these text documents, notes here. You have to do something like that for Google. You have to make notes and say, these are the sites, this is what I've tried to do to fix the problem. They haven't fixed it, here's my report. So with Google, you sort of really have to prove yourself. These are bad links. Because, uh, again, if you disavow a, a site that you shouldn't have, that's really going to affect your traffic. Yes? Mm -hmm. So you can group a bunch of bad domains together. Yes. And so it's theoretically possible to slip a, a good name or a good site in with the bad ones in that list. Yes. But in Bing, you're doing each individual one. Yes. So it's slower than if you have a bunch of them. It is slower in Bing, but it could be more secure because you're actually seeing each one that you're uploading. Whereas in Google, you're going to put a big list of them if you want to save time, but a good one could slip in, yes. Okay. So 
So there are, of course, many other subsections that we sh that we could look at, but the big idea is uh, for you to look at your traffic to see how your efforts are working. If you started to up, uh, apply these concepts in this class that we're talking about, you should start to see this increase of positive results. Uh, it should then start to tell you these are keywords. You don't even have to pay for these. Now this is good because it's making you aware. These are some keywords that are helping me get found. Let me take advantage of, uh, about that by putting those keywords in a tweet or on Facebook or on blog posts. Uh, and then, of course, the report of inbound links, so that I can see good links, so that I can see bad links, and deal with those. Things like the diagnostic tools, you can research those on your own. Basically, every screen that you that you go into, you know, if you go into the SEO Analyzer screen, uh, you'll be able to get help and support for each screen, so that you can fully understand what it's about. These are the tools from Bing. We'll look at the tools from Google in just a moment after our break. Um, so this is the point of setting up the webmaster tools to collect data to be able to make decisions and um, get good results in traffic. Any questions? Okay, let's take our first break. Uh, it's 7.07, .07. we'll be back at 7.17, and then we will do something similar. We're going to log in over to Google Webmaster Tools, or I mean Search Console, and uh, we'll look at that report and see, see how that works, and then Google Analytics. Then we'll talk about content creation. So we're back at 7.17.